Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be doing a first impressions review on the Makeup by Mario collection. So if you want to see my first impressions, my first experience playing with his items, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about the makeup items on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And today in the mail, my Makeup by Mario collection items came. Normally when I do my reviews, I do at least like to play with them, swatch them, something beforehand so I can give you a little bit more information. Today we're gonna be doing it a little bit different. I have just only looked at these. I pulled them out of the box, haven't swatched or touched any of them. Just because there are so many items for the eyes that it's gonna be hard for me to give anything other than a first impressions but of course keep an eye out I will be sure to keep you guys updated on my thoughts on these products but let's get into it so if you don't know and I'm sure you do Mario who is the creator behind this brand he became mostly known for working with Kim Kardashian and I mean he's really changed the industry he's come up with so many makeup trends contouring and all of smoky whatever okay he's a big deal in the industry so I was very excited for this brand. I've been waiting for him to come out with the brand. All the collaborations that he's done I felt have been so well thought out, so well done. Quite honestly, I couldn't wait. Launches he came out with are very eye oriented. There is like one highlighter and some makeup remover wipes and some brushes, but for the most part, everything is for the eyes. I didn't purchase everything from the collection. I skipped out on the brushes and the pencil eyeliners, but I did pick up all of the eyeshadow palettes, one of the master eye prep and sets. I did get one of the liquid liners. Oh, and I skipped out on this like clear highlighter thing because I just look like something I would never use. Price point, he's sitting very happily right in the middle of the high-end makeup price range. You know, lo not luxury, definitely not drugstore. So definitely right in the middle there, which is what I would expect. I would say probably a little bit more on the expensive side of higher end, but definitely not touching luxury quite yet. We're just gonna go in product by product as I experience this with you guys. So we will start off with the first item, which is the Master Eye Prep and Set. So this is $28 and it's an eye primer kit. And by the way, I'm going to link you guys down to Erin Nicole's review because I watched hers and I learned so much about this brand and had to use his products from her. Her review was phenomenal. Mine's not even going to come close to as great as hers was. So make sure you check hers out. I learned so much about this brand from watching her video. There are three shades. There's light, medium, and then a deep shade. I think after looking at Erin's review, I probably should have gotten medium, but I wanted to go light to be on the safe side because I would rather have a lighter eye primer than a deeper eye primer. I just think at least with a lighter eye primer, it's going to make the shadow pop more but you know what this shade looks pretty good for me so I think this might be a touch lighter I could have made medium work but I feel like this is going to be fine so this guy is made in the USA it has a 12 month shelf life and this is what he says on the box this is my secret to a flawless clean and long wearing eye look prime prep conceal with this all-in-one trio so basically both of these are supposed to be the eye primer slash concealer to even out every area of the eye so these are cream products and then you have a powder to set over top so that powder blends seamlessly over. I really like the packaging. It's very sleek, very, very simple. I mean, you guys know I like obnoxious, glittery, colorful packaging, but as far as the way that it feels, it feels very, very sturdy. It has a magnetic closure, which feels very nice as well. So it's simple, but it does feel great. Move in a little bit closer, and I'm just gonna put this all over my lid. It doesn't feel oily or greasy or anything. I do have a little bit of concealer on my eyelid just from blending out my concealer but it seems like a pretty nice consistency and it's blending over my eyelid nicely. I always like to take my sponge afterwards and just really spread the product evenly. So this deeper shade in this trio is definitely a great color for me because it's just a bit light to make those shadows pop but it's not anything crazy. So if you are my skin tone you can definitely make the light one work as well but I think the medium would have been fine for me too and just so I can see I'm gonna dip a little bit into this lighter one we'll put it in the inner half so this one definitely brightens and this is actually really good that for it to brighten this area right here because there's a lot of times we forget the shadow that's there so this can help with that shadow 
And then I'm gonna take a little bit of the powder. I'm using my BK Beauty 202 brush and I'm just gonna pat this over the lid. I don't know if people debate this anymore, but there was a debate. Do you need to set your eye with powder or the colors will show more vibrant and will still blend if you don't set your eye? I don't normally set my eye. I normally just give the eye primer time to dry down before I put products on top and that normally works fine. But I think for every day, sometimes it is just a little bit quicker to set it with the translucent powder. So obviously I will have to let you guys know how this wears as far as longevity, but I do really like the concept of this. I like that you can mix the shades. I like that you have a powder to set over it, but I think where the true test for this is, is going to be how makeup blends on top of it and if it makes makeup last, which my problem is I don't really have a problem with longevity of makeup, so it's gonna be hard for me to tell with this, but I really like the layer that it laid down. So, so far I do like this. All right, you guys, it is time to get into the good stuff. So I did buy all three of his palettes. And we're gonna start off with the Master Mattes. I'm really excited about this one. This is a palette with 12 universal matte shades that deliver smooth, luxurious, highly blendable color. So this is made in the USA. It has a 24 month shelf life and none of the shades have real names. It's just matte one, two, three, four. It's the same packaging as the eye primer, but obviously shaped like this. You get a mirror and then you have your 12 shades. Now he said, according to Erin Nicole in her video, which again, super informative, highly recommend you check it out that he based these colors off of real human skin tones so that this would be the most flattering on everybody and I really love this there's something about a palette like this that you will use a lot I think so far by just looking at it I haven't even touched it I really think it's a great range for getting that true gradient look which I personally appreciate I don't think that a palette like this is for everybody because it is boring and he does separate you know shimmers from the mattes in his line as somebody who has done makeup professionally oh, <laughs> whatever you guys know what I mean I do appreciate this being separated by finish and I think that these colors are so basic and so needed that it makes it okay for me. So I'm just gonna swatch these down my arm to get a feel for them. They do go in a gradient so from lightest to deepest. So we have matte one, matte two, matte three, matte four, matte five, matte six, and I apologize I'm not a very good swatcher. <laughs> Like some people are so good, I'm not. Seven, eight, nine. Okay, okay. Let's get these last three. 10, 11, and 12. So based on how they swatch, I wouldn't say they are overly pigmented, but they do have a nice smooth feel to them. And I don't mind that they aren't overly pigmented on the first swatch. It depends on if they build up and if they blend. If they're a softer, less pigmented formula, a lot of times I tend to appreciate that if it builds and blends. Because it can be a lot if a shadow is very, very pigmented, it has a lot of fallout and it's difficult to blend. That's not what you want. Hopefully, since he is a makeup artist, these are the texture that I'm hoping they will be, but I will say they do feel very, very nice and smooth, like they're gonna blend well. So I'm just gonna do a basic blend. We have some shimmers that we have to deal with, and I only have two eyeballs, you guys. So today's look is not going to incorporate as much of the colors and textures as I would like. I'm gonna start off with the cream shade, and I'm just going to put that underneath the brow bone don't necessarily need like a shimmery under brow highlight. I usually just like a cream to kind of lift this area. And we're gonna go into this matte shade right here. So you can see that the eye primer does need blend it out if you let it sit for a little bit. Okay, so I will say definitely on the softer side of pigmentation, it gives you just enough, but it's not the most pigmented matte that I've dealt with, which is not a bad thing, like I said. We're gonna start building. I'm gonna go into this shade now, and I'm gonna pat this out here. Okay, I just talked about them not being super pigmented, and that was pretty pigmented. <laughs> I'm gonna take a clean brush. I'm gonna work on blending these edges out. We're really gonna test out the black just to see what we can do. I'm taking a really small brush. This is a Refer 14 brush. And I'm going to smoke out this area. Seems to me that this black is pretty easy to work with. It gives you just enough pigmentation, but you can still go pretty light-handed with it. 
take this with a grain of salt because I have only dealt with four colors on this one occasion. I think this is a nice matte palette. It's not going to give you too much pigmentation, but you're still getting just enough. The shadows are pretty blendable, but I will say it's not a formula that knocks my sock off. I feel like whenever I use Vizzy Art Mattes or Sydney Gray, Charlotte Tilbury, those I really do feel like I have a magical moment with and they blend themselves. I didn't have that with this palette. I did feel like I did have to blend. They didn't do it themselves, but it's solid. I like the colors and everything worked out fine. I don't have anything bad to say. It's just not my favorite matte formula in the world at this moment. Okay, so now this one for me was the most exciting palette. I think it is stunning. So this is the Master Metallics palette. This one is also $48 and it is a palette of go-to metallic shades that create endless eye looks in 12 creamy luxurious shades that blend onto the lid. This one is made in Italy, which I'm really excited that he went to Italy for their shimmer formula because it's true Italy creates the most beautiful luxurious shimmer formula so that's what, definitely where you should source these kinds of colors from this one has a 24 month shelf life and do you see how stunning these are they say that this palette is inspired by Mario's love of nature and it can be used wet or dry to achieve a white wash or full pigment. Now for these shades, I'm probably not going to do too much with this palette right now, unfortunately, because there is another pro metallic palette that we have, but let's play with these at the very least. But this palette is definitely even more gorgeous in person. When you see the way that these hit the light, this is so stunning. And I think it's nice that you have the matte palette and this palette. I would love to see more colorful matte shades pair with this palette because you do have some fun elements of color in here because that other palette is so neutral. So I feel like he can create an even better match to this palette with the mattes, but ooh, these feel really, really good. Let's swatch. Oh yes. Hopefully you guys can see that. These feel delicious. They are very creamy feeling, but they're not super wet feeling because sometimes a shimmer shadow can feel a little bit too wet to the point where it kind of smudges on your eyelid and mixes up all together. These have that perfect super silky feeling, but it's not too wet. Yes, oh wow. Mm-hmm. I'm a really big fan of this palette already, and I know I haven't put them on my eyes yet, you guys. I've dealt with a lot of eyeshadows in my lifetime, and I can tell you guys I'm really gonna like that one. Because I do have the chrome palette after this that I wanna try, I'm going to do something that is gonna be very, very simple for now with this palette. So I'm just gonna take this golden color right here, and I'm going to press this all over the lid. I'm just going in dry. Yeah, you know, very interesting. When I use this shadow dry, it's definitely not giving me the full pigmentation on my eyelid that I was expecting based on how it felt. But I'm sure using a finger or using it wet is going to completely change that. So let me try with a finger. Yeah. I mean, a complete different experience with the finger. So if you still like this very dry, wet, light washed kind of look, Using a brush is fine. But this kind of texture does benefit from finger if you want a little bit more punch to your look. But I just love the colors in here. And I don't necessarily know that this is going to go with the look that I do, but we're gonna take this shade right here and I'm just gonna run this along my lower lash line. Again, just as an excuse to try some more colors. These shimmer shades remind me a lot of the feeling of the shimmer shades in the Charlotte Tilbury Icon palette. So if you have that palette, these shimmers remind me of that. And then lastly, I'm just gonna take a pencil brush and go in this light champagne shade and we'll use this as the inner corner highlight. And then I said I don't need a shimmery brow bone highlight. But while we're here, we're just gonna put it right underneath the arch. Okay, so I think this palette is very, very pretty. Again, it reminds me of that Charlotte Tilbury formula a lot. I really like the colors in here. I was a little bit disappointed about how it worked with a brush, but other than that, I think it is gorgeous. The finish is gorgeous, and I think a lot of you guys are really gonna like this one. All right, you guys, so now we're gonna go into that crazy Master Metals palette. So the last one I just did was the Metallics. This one is the Metals palette. So this one's also $48, and you're gonna get five shades 
with this one. So this one's very different than the other two palettes. So this one you're getting five shades and it's still $48. So this one might not interest you guys as much, but this one is the coolest kind of makeup artist kind of item. Uh, it's very intriguing. So this one is made in Italy also. We have an 18 month shelf life here and these are inspired by real metals. And this is one that is supposed to really be used wet with the master metal manipulator. I heard, and I cannot confirm this because I do not own it, but I heard that this master manipulator is actually the same ingredients as the Mayron mixing medium. Like I said, cannot confirm nor deny, but you guys normally are on top of your stuff. This master manipulator is $14. I almost passed on this, but I'm so happy I decided to get it because I like mixing mediums. I think they help with longevity of makeup. I just didn't know if I wanted this or not. So this is a pro mixing liquid that transforms metallic pigments into long lasting molten metal eyeshadows and eyeliners. And what's really neat and why I would suggest pairing these two together is because the Master Metals palette actually has a removable tray for you to do your mixing on. And when you order the mixing medium, it's gonna come with a spatula. So the directions are to actually scrape some of the pigments in here onto the tray and then put your mixing medium in and mix them together, which I think is more appropriate for eyeliners. But as far as topping the lid, I do think it's better to actually put the mixing medium on your brush first and then dipping into the shadow. I tend to do it the opposite Opposite because I really worry about messing up the texture of the shadows. Oh, let me swatch these dry for you first though. These definitely feel very different than the metallic palette. So here's the pinky shade. Ooh, it's still stunning though. So these are still really, really pretty dry and they still hold a punch for sure, but I'm very interested to see how this works with the mixing medium. So I'm gonna put a couple drops of the mixing medium in my tray. I'm using a Wayne Goss number seven brush. I'm just gonna mix that in here. And I'm gonna go directly into the corner. We'll do this middle shade and I'll put it in the center of my lid. Oh yeah, that definitely completely changed the consistency of the shadow. All of a sudden it's super creamy. Holy cow. Now I have more than I know what to do with. I mean, that definitely changes the consistency of the shadow, but really what makes a mixing medium different from like a water or something is when this dries, it's gonna be able to not move. It becomes waterproof. So I'm just gonna leave this here, kind of blend the edges a little bit. And again, if you are worried about contaminating the eyeshadow, feel free to scrape some of the pigment. I just find that it's best to go straight in with the brush. Just make sure you have a designated corner that you do that with. So I just use the top left corner when I decide to mix that. So you're not completely ruining the texture of the shadow. Obviously, I've only dipped into one actual color of this, but I think this is a neat concept. I don't necessarily think you need it. I think you probably have a lot of other metallic shades where you can buy a mixing medium in, and I do believe in mixing mediums because look at this. Now this has dried. This is going nowhere. Like if I go like that to the dry powders, they go everywhere. This is the difference between water and a mixing medium doesn't go anywhere. So I do think that this is a nice mixing medium, whether or not you need to get this one in particular, I'm not sure, but I think this will work well with a lot of other shimmers. It doesn't necessarily have to be the Makeup by Mario metal shades, but I mean, the colors are still stunning in here, but it is a lot for $50, I will admit that. So I would say this probably isn't my favorite of the palettes, it's probably my least favorite because it's the most unnecessary in my opinion. Yeah. These are a little bit more metallic and chrome and they're formulated to work with the mixing medium, but you can use the mixing medium with whatever formula you would like. So I don't think this is a need. I think it's a bit extra, but I do think it's really cool. I do love this tray aspect. I think that was very well thought out. And that's what happens when you're a makeup artist and you create your own makeup brand. Like, I didn't expect anything less. I'm excited about this packaging a lot. Okay, friends, I did kind of get one other eyeshadow product, which is the Master Crystal Reflector. This is $24, so it's pretty pricey. There are three different shades. I got mine in the shade Bronzite, but it came 
super broken. I'll swatch it for you guys, but it's made in Italy, has a 24 month shelf life, and it is an exclusive formula that creates a spotlight effect on the eyes or face and illuminates with aquatic radiant light. And I need to contact Sephora to get it together and send me a new one. But it doesn't give you much pigment. I don't even know if you can see where I put it. If you see a sparkle, it's kind of just like a sheer sparkle. So this is supposed to go on the center. I'll put it in the right here just for some glitter. Maybe I'm not pressing hard enough. Yeah, so this color really doesn't give me any type of pigmentation. It just gives me that glitter finish. But I think it's a bit pricey for $24. I'm interested in seeing how the other two colors compared. Because this is very pretty. It's that little bit of glitter right there. But that's a lot. I don't know. For $24, I would say you probably don't need that. I think that's a bit expensive for what it is. Okay, so let's go on to the last item that I picked up from the line. This is the Master Matte's liquid eyeliner this guy has a six month shelf life and this is made in germany germany does a really good job with like lip liners and eyeliners this one is 22 dollars, and i've been on a mission to find the absolute best liquid liner so i was excited to try this one i've been buying a lot of liquid liners lately he says this is my pro liquid liner formula providing long lasting waterproof definition with an effortless flexible tip so i feel like everybody's interpretation of liquid liner is so different but let's give this one a try. Here is what the tip looks like, by the way. So here's kind of my initial thoughts about this based on first application. Obviously, can't speak on the long lastingness of this. I will say though, I really love the way that this applied. The tip wasn't too flexible, so it was actually very easy for me to have a lot of control. Sometimes one of my pet peeves is when the tip is a little bit too thin and flexible that it's hard to get control. I had just enough control with this. It applied a lot of black color the color did not bleed either. Where I put the color down, it stayed. So there's no bleeding with application. It's very, very black. It deposited the perfect amount of color. I really like the tip. I do wish the tip was a bit longer though, because I really like to be able to swoop it. It's pretty matte. It's not the most matte eyeliner in the world, but it's not shiny either. So, so far, I really like this eyeliner. All right, so that was that. I'm gonna finish the rest of my makeup and then I'll be back for my final thoughts. All right, so here you guys can see what the final look turned out like. I realized I went very, very boring with this look today. I was so interested in trying out the formulas that I didn't even think about creating a cool look. So I apologize. I definitely will need to continue playing with these products and hopefully creating cooler looks than just this. But I do wanna go over my final thoughts thus far. Now, like I said, First impressions, take this with a grain of salt. This was the first time applying these products, playing them, opening them, all of that good stuff. But the Master Eye Prep and Set, I really like. I don't have a product like this in my collection. I think it's very convenient and I do hope that it does help my eyeshadows last longer. I cannot speak on that. But for the most part, I really do like this kit. I think it's really cool. As far as the eyeshadows go, the Master Mattes palette, I think is a solid palette. I really love the colors. I feel like this is just great. Back to the basic colors that you're going to use all the time because I'm somebody who appreciates a true gradient look and really starting off with the lighter shades and really building it out to the deeper shades. I appreciate this color story here and I think it's very practical especially for a makeup artist. I don't think everybody needs it because I don't think everybody reaches for just these colors and needs every single tone of brown but I do think it's very nice. I think it's a nice formula. It didn't knock my socks off like I said but it worked out just fine so this is good. Um, the Master Metallics I think is my favorite palette of the palettes, the one that I would highly recommend. I recommend using a finger with these, using them wet, or even with the mixing medium. I just think the array of colors here is really stunning, and I really cannot wait to continue playing with this. I do think, I mean, these shades are brown, and these colors will work together, but I do think we could do some really cool stuff with a different set of colorful mattes, so I don't know that I would necessarily pair these two together all of the time, but I really just love the overall look and aesthetic of this palette. This one's my favorite. And then the 
the master metals, I think it's just cooler than it actually is. Like as far as the product itself, I think it's quite pricey for five shades, $48, but I am completely obsessed with the pull out tray. I think it's such a good idea, but I don't necessarily think you need it. I think you can just wet other shadows and get a very similar finish. So while the concept is cool, I don't think it's a necessity, but it worked out good. Quality wise, it's really gorgeous. And not to confuse you, for any reason. But I will say, after finally playing with the shadows a little bit more, comparing, swatching, looking a bit closer, I will say this palette does have a very special chrome-like effect, even just dry. So it's like super nice, I don't know. I do think it's not my favorite of all the palettes. But like I said, the mixing medium I think is a very nice mixing medium. Uh, $14 is not a bad price at all. I like that it came with a scraper and it really did make these shadows waterproof and chrome. So if you're looking for a mixing medium, I think this is a good one to start off with. I think it's very easy to use and he did a good job with this formula. The Bronze Eye Master Crystal Reflection. I would say this is the only thing in this collection that I really Really don't recommend it's pretty and I really do like this crystal effect that it gave me on the eyes but for $24 for a singular one of these I just think that that is a bit much personally and then finally the liquid liner of course time is really gonna tell with this eyeliner but I really liked the application I like the amount of product that I gave off so so far first impressions really really nice so overall definitely a solid launch I liked everything that he came out with there wasn't a product that I was like oh this is bad quality don't buy it but yeah thumbs up so that is all i have for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you aren't subscribed to my channel already i would absolutely love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one